Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining, for being here today, for showing up. I can see there's a couple of you watching. So it's just after three, so I'll get cracking on today's video. So first of all, um, I just wanted to explain why I decided to create this create the session really um, and the reason for that is this week is mental health awareness week and every year the mental health awareness foundation chooses a topic to focus on and this year they've decided to focus on body image and I'll go into a little bit um, about what they found out uh, and really this has just been the premise of uh, why I've decided to do what I'm doing today uh, as, an, as an effort to really help people to improve their own body image. So, let's kick off. So, they do, the Mental Health Awareness Foundation do a lot of work around prevention, which means that they help a lot of children, particularly under the age of 14, because what they found is that body image uh, develops quite our own perception of our body image develops when we're quite young, below the age of 14. And so they found that by the age of 14, over 50% of children actually have um, complexes or issues with their body image. And these numbers that they found in their... Oh, I might have just gone offline. But these, these numbers that they've just found in their survey recently show that... I mean, we're talking one in six people this week have experienced a mental health problem such as anxiety or depression. And these numbers are really, really staggering. So what's important to remember here is that if you're experiencing some kind of self-doubt or limiting self-talk, is to realise that you're not alone in this, right? We all go through life and we all experience um, different, um, we have different life experiences and this might trigger certain emotions and feelings for us. And so throughout this workshop what we're going to do is try and identify where those thoughts and feelings start showing up for us. I seem to have lost connection so I hope you guys are still with me. So what we're going to do today is we're going to raise the awareness around how we talk to ourselves. And what we're going to do is we're going to, in effect, look in a mirror. Right? We're going to create a mirror where we're going to raise this awareness. And by doing so, what we're doing is we're creating a more balanced view of ourselves. Right? When we start looking in the mirror and we start actually seeing for ourselves you know, what we look like and what we think about ourselves, we can begin to break down and see things from a different perspective, right? And the other thing is identifying these triggers when they actually show up for us. So, the first step of this is the practice of self-acceptance. Having a negative body image is a bit like having a critic in your head. And this critic can be really harsh, right? It can say really, really nasty comments about you or about us, about ourselves, right? We live in our own heads. We talk to ourselves all the time. And so, for example, we put on a dress or some jeans or some clothing and we think to ourselves, we look in the mirror and we think to ourselves, I look disgusting. I can't believe what I look like in this. I shouldn't be wearing this. And this inner critic makes us feel awful because what happens is we start to believe those things that we're saying to ourselves. And it's kind of like a spiral because the more we say these things to ourselves, the more we reaffirm that belief, right? So there are certain moments when we can particularly be triggered by this. So for example, we might eat something and it gives us this momentary pleasure, you know, we go to the, the freezer and we take out a tub of ice cream. And we're like, oh, I'm super hungry. Uh, I've got to eat this ice cream. And we indulge the whole tub. And then after we finish the ice cream, we think to ourselves, 
oh, I'm such a pig. Why did I finish that? Why did I eat the whole tub? And this is the inner critic at work. This is that inner voice that is talking to us, that is telling us, actually, you probably shouldn't have eaten that. But instead of, you know, perhaps being kind about it, we start to critique ourselves. And this can have a really profound negative effect on our psychology. So how do we change this? The big key to changing negative body image is to kill the critic and to teach ourselves self-acceptance. And this means loving ourselves as we are. A bit like this ape right here. <laughs> And there are plenty of uh, techniques that we can do, uh, we can look at to begin this journey, this process of self-acceptance, right? And the first of those is to look at our belief system. What is a belief? A belief is a story that we hold true about ourselves. Right? So it's something that we think is true about ourselves. So an example of this might be when we go out and we meet someone new for the first time and they ask us, what do we do? And we start going into our little speech about what we do. And this essentially is a story that we have manufactured about ourselves. Right? And based on that alone, that means that this story that we are telling, we believe to be true. Now, the reverse of this is a limiting belief, a belief that can hold us back from having what we want. So a belief, for example, I'm not good enough uh, or I'm not clever enough to get A stars in my exam or I'm not good enough to run my own business or I love food so much I'm never going to lose weight. All of these things are limiting beliefs that we tell ourselves and they actually hold us back. And it's really hard to look into uh, or to identify what they are because this is so subtle. It happens on such a subconscious level that often we don't even realise these stories that we're telling ourselves because they just become habitual. They become part of who we are. Right. So when we start to tell ourselves something um, for the first time, it might feel a little bit strange. You know, for example, let's say um, we take up a new sport or a new hobby and all of a sudden we become a footballer, right? But you were never a footballer before. So that story that you're going to manufacture about yourselves, you know, or the, the story that you're going to now tell yourself about being a footballer, that was a really random example, but the story that you're now going to tell yourselves about being that performer is going to manifest itself inside of you and you're going to become that belief, quite literally, okay? So in context, we're talking about body image today, and in context, this might look like some of these examples. So I'm not good enough because I'm not X, and for you that might be I'm not tall, or I'm not short, or I'm not slim enough, right? There's another type of belief, which um, there is another type of belief um, which um, we tell ourselves which might be I need to be a certain size to do a certain thing so for example we might tell ourselves to be a model I need to be really slim or to be a personal trainer I need to be really fit right and so we start to tell ourselves in order to achieve something we need to look or be a certain way right and that is part of a limiting belief system we might also tell ourselves i won't find a partner if i look like x right we might say to ourselves um i can't wear this certain type of clothes because i look like x right and these are all manufactured beliefs that we have created within ourselves from society, right? So all of these um, frame of references that we tell ourselves is based on what we see around us, what we see other people doing, how we see other people act, the content, the media that we consume, right? And these categories are defined by society. They are literally defined by the clothes that we wear, the industry and the jobs that we have access to, 
and things like social media, the newspapers that we read, the magazines that we read. All of these things um, create labels for ourselves. Right? And this is a bit of a paradox because we need the labels to reaffirm who we are as individuals. But by doing that, we become a victim of our own societal labelling. And what I mean by that is, we, let's say, for example, we go to a shop to buy some clothes. And for me personally, I am quite short. So in a shop, I would be a petite, right? And by default, when I go into a shop, I begin to tell myself, I am looking for petite. I'm looking for something that's short. And so I have this perception of myself that I'm short. And that might mean that in other certain situations, social situations, I see myself as uh, someone who's invisible, for example, because people can't literally see me. Right? And so this is a bit of a paradox because on the one hand, we have the choice to choose how we see ourselves. But on the other hand, society decide, kind of decides for us, you know, what box or what bracket we should be fitting into. Right. So, for example, if we're really tall, you know, we might wear certain size of clothing and therefore we think that we are a certain type of way or a certain type of person. OK. And. These beliefs can be really subtle. So what I want you to do now is to think about when you look in the mirror, what do you say to yourself about your own body? I gave some examples in the previous slide. And I just want you to take a moment just to have a think. If you have a pen and paper with you, just to jot down what you say to yourself when you look in the mirror. And I want you to be brutally honest with yourself. Be objective about this. You know, if you don't feel comfortable looking in the mirror, that's okay. This is all part of a process. What we're doing is trying to figure out what that trigger is and which moment that happens. Okay. So once you've got your sentence down, I want you to have a look at this next question. And I want to remind you that we can define the labels that we assign ourselves. So we have the ability, we have the choice to say, actually, I'm this type of person. I believe that I look this kind of way. Okay? I believe that I'm beautiful, right? So if you were to rewrite the belief that you're currently holding, that the answer that you wrote down in question one, what would be the answer to this? If you were to rewrite that belief what would you say to yourself? Now, if you're thinking, I'm not quite sure what that would look like, I have some examples here for you. And we can look at these as body affirmations, right? When we're redefining or reworking a certain idea or belief, right? We want it to be a positive affirmation. And that could look like something like, I'm beautiful inside and out. I'm comfortable in my own skin. My body deserves love and respect. I love my body as it is today. Food is not the enemy. And I thank the food I eat for nourishing me. So I just want you to have a think. Just remind yourself of that second question, which was to rewrite the belief that you wrote down for question one. One of the ones here that I've written is opinions or others' opinions of my body do not affect or involve me. Because often what happens is we look around us and we seek affirmations and we compare ourselves to other people. We compare ourselves to the people around us. You know, there was a time when I was overweight and I went to Slimming World. And in, perhaps in that room, I was the slimmest person in the room. But perhaps when I went to the beach, I was not. So it's important to recognise what goes on for us internally when we're rewriting these beliefs. And if there are certain thoughts coming up for you now, you know, if it's bringing up other emotions for you, make sure you drop those down as well. Make sure you note what's going on for you, what's coming up for you. Okay. 
So now we have this new reworked belief. We have this new reworked idea that we have of ourselves. The question you might be asking is when, when do we use this new belief? When do I tell myself this? Because there are some thoughts about affirmations that you should wake up in the morning and you should tell yourself in the morning, you know, I'm confident, I'm bold. You might think, okay, well, I need to be telling myself this at night. You know, all of these things are good times to be telling yourself body affirmations. But the best time to be telling yourself any kind of affirmations is actually at that moment when you get triggered. When you feel that rise of emotion, that irritation inside of you, and you start to feel, oh, this doesn't feel good, this doesn't feel nice, to actually recall that belief that you've created for yourself, right, and to, and to switch that. Just checking if there's any comments. Great. Hi ladies. Okay, so how do we identify the trigger, right? The important thing is there are two different things about triggers, right? Feeling bad and feeling fat are not the same thing, okay? And this is how we can differentiate between the two. Right? So the first example, it would be an example of feeling bad. For example, we have a stressful day at work, we have an argument with a partner or a friend, maybe we get a parking ticket or we stub our big toe and something, something really irritating happens to us. Perhaps let's take the example that we have uh, an argument with a friend, right? And for us, that might trigger this kind of uneasy feeling inside of us. We feel, oh no, that doesn't feel right. I feel, I feel ugly. I feel like an ugly person for having said that. That is a trigger that is not connected with your body image. That is causing a feeling of, um, of, of feeling bad within yourself, right? You might feel ugly and that is triggered um, by something that is not body related. Right? So this is essentially why we say or why it's been said that beauty comes from the inside because quite literally it manifests itself on the inside and we can feel ugly about a certain situation but that's different to feeling um, you know feeling uh, bad about our body image specifically okay they're two different things so when we start to get this feeling inside of us you know maybe we start to feel fat we start to feel unattractive we start to have this internal questioning going on in our head and in this moment, it's important to ask yourself, what has triggered this feeling? What is it that has set this feeling off in motion, right? If you've stubbed your toe and you start feeling, oh, I'm so clumsy, I'm so stupid, why did I do that? Why am I hurting myself? Right? These are the questions that you're going to be asking yourself, and that is going to be the trigger to these emotions, right? So it's important to identify the real issue and separate this from your body issues. So what would a body trigger feel like? Now, this commonly happens when we, for example, eat a meal. Or when we walk past a mirror, perhaps we walk past a mirror and we go, oh, I don't look good today. Don't want to look in the mirror. Don't, don't want to see myself, okay? And that is a body image related trigger. When we physically don't want to look at ourselves in the mirror anymore because we just feel like, you know, I can't stand this. I can't stand the way that I look, right? That is a physical response, right? And once we eat food, for example, once we've eaten a meal, we might feel fat after we've eaten. And that is a direct correlation to the action, right? When we're talking about um, eating a meal, looking in mirrors, things like this, this is all body image related, right? Uh, another example could be when, I don't know, we're in a shop and we try on a piece of clothing and we ask a friend, you know, does this, what does this look like on me? Does this look good on me? And they say, actually, it's not very flattering on you. Right? Our emotional reaction to that could be, I now feel fat. 
instead of saying ourselves, you know what, I feel good in this in this piece of clothing and I want to wear this because it makes me feel good. Okay, so it's important to start uh, questioning this internal dialogue. Right? If we start feeling this way, we need to be asking ourselves, what has triggered this feeling? Is it because I've just eaten a meal and now I'm looking down at my belly and I'm looking at all my wobbly bits and feeling like I've uh, put on a bit of weight? Right? And the rational response to that would be to remind ourselves that our weight and appearance was the same before we started eating. So although we feel different inside, we must remember that our weight itself, what's physical and on the outside, actually hasn't changed. It's our perception of ourselves on the inside that has changed. So once we recognise when that trigger starts happening, we can start using that uh, uh, body affirmation that we created before, that new belief. So instead of having this emotional reaction on the bottom left, which is, oh, I'm feeling fat, we might have the response of, I'm feeling comfortable in my own skin. And lastly, this is question three. If everything or anything that I've said so far hasn't resonated with you and you're still feeling to yourself, you know what, I'm still feeling a little bit gross, I'm still feeling a little bit ashamed, um, that's okay. What we're doing is working on acceptance. Right. Our bodies, like life, is fluid, right? and the way that we treat ourselves is the way that ultimately how we're going to treat our bodies. So if we start treating our bodies um, you know, like uh, holy vessels, for example, um, we're, we're going to start treating them, we're going to start eating the right foods, we're going to start training in the right way. Naturally, that is going to start happening. So... If you think about a specific body part that perhaps you felt ashamed of, I want you to name it. I want you to name that, or perhaps it's not even a body part, you know, for an example that I can think of for myself in the past, which I've had, uh, is having acne, right? It could be feeling ashamed of having acne, right? And what we're going to do is that you find Feel the energy move around your body in a certain way. You know, perhaps you might start to feel a twitch or a tingle. Just become aware of the sensations that are going through your body as you're doing this question, as you're doing this exercise. Great. Okay, guys. So that was my last question for today. I hope that this has been a little bit useful. Um, it was really just a quick um, half an hour introduction to some basic concepts around beliefs, around triggers. Um, we'll be looking at our body images and how we think and feel about ourselves. In recent years, I can speak for myself and say that um, I've probably felt more comfortable in my own body as I've got older, um, but for sure, you know, throughout life, um, there was definitely times and moments where I felt overweight, underweight, I've been through periods of depression, and for some people, that means that you end up overeating and putting on weight, and for me, that was actually the reverse, I ended up becoming so secluded and isolated that I didn't eat anything at all. And one of the things reflecting back now is seeing how these questions and these awarenesses would have helped me to actually overcome what I was thinking at the time a bit more objectively, because there is that tendency to get stuck in our own heads. So just one last thing before I go, and that is um, the mental health awareness 
um, or the Mental Health Foundation in the UK, they have set a campaign. And their campaign for this year is to post a picture on social media of a time or place when you felt comfortable in your own skin. So this could be now, it could have been five years ago, it could be when you were five, um, it can be a photo of yourself or it can be a photo of something else that reminds you of a particular moment. Um, but really I want to encourage you guys to get involved and to share this message um, with everyone else um, and really to just create some traction around this um, because these guys are doing some great work. So that's it for today. I'm just going to check to see if there are any comments. Oh, great. Okay. Hi, Anna. Uh, I am going to go back to question three. I've just seen that some of you said that you couldn't hear me temporarily. But I'm glad that you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Hope that you can hear me now. <laughs> but I guess this is the first time I've ever tried. I'm actually broadcasting not through Facebook, but through another app which goes to Facebook so that I have the ability to share with you the presentation as well. So this has uh, been a bit of a trial as well to see um, how this goes. But I really enjoyed uh, putting this together, so I hope that you guys have found some value in this. Um, I know perhaps body image isn't perhaps a topic that's commonly spoken about. Um, we can be a bit dismissive. Oh, I know I can be a bit dismissive um, when it comes to people's body image. And really, you might look at someone and you might think to yourself, oh my gosh, they have it all together, they look amazing, they look perfect. But the truth is, you do not know what is going through someone's head. You do not know what's going internally for, some on, internally for someone else. Okay, so as much as someone's life might look perfect on the outside and they appear to be perfect, that might not be the case internally. And similarly, you know, there might be people who don't fit into a perfect category. Like, they might consider themselves to be overweight, but completely and totally comfortable with who they are. Right? So, it works both ways. And ultimately, you get to choose, you get to decide what you believe about yourself. Whether you believe that you're average, whether you believe that you're too tall, too short, it doesn't even matter because these like, what is average? Who makes up these labels? Society, but who makes up society? We do. We do as individuals. And that is why we have the ability to um, take our own perceptions and our own life into our own hands. And when we make these better choices, we become better people. So thank you so much for joining, guys. Just check again. Good to know about the technical difficulties. I will bear that in mind. No questions for now. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to um, invite people to the group who you think might find this beneficial, might have found this useful. Um, if there are any topics that you would like me to cover, please drop me a message. Um, I'm always researching and I'm always looking at new ideas. I just love knowledge and I love to make presentations and to put stuff <laughs> down on paper uh, and share it with people. And I guess now I've found a way to actually do that here online. So um, I really hope that um, yeah, you guys have got some value out of this and I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.